There are many mysteries to be found within ancient Egypt. Unexplained, seemingly impossible mysteries, which litter the caverns, tunnels, flooded underground layers, and indeed, the once inaccessible passageways, only recently explored using advanced modern technology. However, some of the most perplexing mysteries lay in plain sight. Not only the Great Pyramids themselves, an obvious enigma for academia to explain the construction of, but many anomalous features which can be found within objects often leaving academics baffled as to an explanation. The Cheops sarcophagus being one such anomaly. Although these pyramids are entered and explored by millions of people every year, and indeed, this mysterious sarcophagus shown to many of these inquisitive explorers, what many the funded academic tour guide often leaves absent from their explanation of this supposed tomb is how exactly it arrived at its current location. As we have explored and exposed previously, the casing stones that can be found on many of the pyramids are to us not only indicative of another phase of construction work, once having been undertaken upon these structures, but due to the erosion present and the different styles featured, are in fact indicative of more than one attempt to conserve these marvelous structures for future generations. Thus, one must conclude by more than one now extinct advanced civilization. As such, the age of the sarcophagus of Cheops could be immense. So it is not surprising that it has encountered not only grave robbers, but has been vandalized also at points within the distant past. Furthermore, and perhaps most intriguing and frustrating, is that the sarcophagus lid is missing a lid that could have explained the past contents of this mysterious box. Or, like the tomb of Pakal, exposed extremely controversial illustrations of possible past technologies. Unfortunately, however, or rather most conveniently for academics, this lid has never been discovered. Yet what is most perplexing regarding this diorite box, notably one of the hardest workable stones on Earth, is that no one seems to know how the original builders managed to transport the box to its current location deep within the bowels of Cheops. The diameter of this supposed tomb, being too large to have traveled down any of the known tunnels, which have so far been discovered within the ancient pyramid. This leaves us with two likely possibilities. One, that the diorite box was placed there and the pyramid built around it which is a mysterious and confusing hypothesis, mostly due to the lack of markings of significance found upon the sarcophagus, or indeed the lack of any dedicative markings found anywhere else surrounding it. It is as though the box was placed there without much effort to indicate any importance to its existence. Yet, to cut such a box, which has since been discovered to have been cast from one single block of diorite, would have taken tremendous effort, a feat that modern man would only accomplish with the use of diamond-edged power tools, not to mention the effort that would have been involved in moving this multi-ton stone into its found location. The second hypothesis regarding how this sarcophagus found its way into its current location is that the box itself was transported to its found location through tunnels and passageways we are yet to discover possibly hinting at the fact that within this Great Pyramid, there are indeed many more hidden layers and cavities we are yet to explore or discover. Maybe the placement of this seemingly inanimate box was placed there to suggest exactly this. Furthermore, what was on the lid of this supposed sarcophagus? Why is it known as the sarcophagus of Khufu, when Khufu was not discovered within it? In fact, nothing was discovered within it. And why is the lid mysteriously absent? Where did the lid to the sarcophagus go? Why, if destroyed by grave robbers, was it not left where it lay? Did this lid contain controversial information, possibly pertaining to the original contents or indeed purpose of the Great Pyramids? We find the diorite sarcophagus of Khufu 
and indeed its unexplainable journey into the center of the pyramid, highly compelling. No other ruins anywhere on our planet is surrounded with more controversy than that of the Great Pyramids of Egypt, or indeed its accompanying plateau. There are many factors to consider when it comes to Egyptology. Within academic fields, there are many no-go areas of study. Although hard work and research within permitted areas has taught us a great deal about the previous 4,000 years of the site's inhabitants, yet regardless of the most astute academic thesis, there remains three, proverbially, large elephants in the room. When it comes to a full or even a mere fraction of an explanation in regards to the origin, of these seemingly impossibly huge pyramids remains patiently absent. No accounts, illustrations of any kind from the era exists. It is simply illogical, especially when one considers the sheer feat these structures must have been. We have presented many previous features, polygonal masonry being present on the pyramids. Eroded, yet younger casing stones protecting inner megaliths, clearly of a tremendous age. Salt sediment found encrusting the lower chambers, and so on, suggesting not only that the pyramids are much older than currently claimed, but were pre-flood ruins. Thus, questions arise. Just how old are the Great Pyramids? In addition to our study of the pyramids, we have also, in the past, asserted that the Sphinx was originally a lion which, interestingly, correlates to the following hypothesis with fascinating accuracy. The Orion Theory The coincidence with pyramids aligned with Orion's belt and other significant constellational positions. Bavel and Hancock support the theory, believing the Great Sphinx was begun in 10,500 BC, creating reference to the constellation of Leo and the orientation of the entire complex with the Nile River and even Milky Way, claimed by them as connected respectively. Zeptepi, using similar methodology, put the age at over 13,000 years. These are clearly astonishing proposals, but the current paradigm for their chronology, we feel, is far too short a time span, and due to our own research, which has uncovered evidence indicative of pre-flood origins, copper tools for such an accomplishment a mere insult to intelligence. Yet, thankfully, due to these various takes on events, their age remains highly contested, and, to us, a mystery, which is incredibly compelling. One of the most enigmatic, mysterious, and least understood ancient structures to be found anywhere on Earth. Although many academic institutions and funded individuals throughout the years have maintained that these structures were tomb sites built for ancient Egypt's greatest leaders, the severe lack of evidence supporting such claims, along with the lack of any hieroglyphic recording of the enormous undertaking that these structures would have been, contradicts this explanation. Particularly Cheops, the largest of the three great pyramids, and the only one constructed to in fact have eight sides. The only one with tunnels, the only one with shafts, most notably the shaft which led to Gattenbrink's door, long thought to have been air shaft, due to its steep incline and minuscule scale. And although it is the only one to possess such features, they were installed perfectly. These tiny shafts were not only perfectly aligned throughout the structure's internal stonework, built with unimaginable skill and accuracy, but these were somehow hermetically sealed during the pyramid's original construction. This would have been required to avoid them becoming blocked with dust, with the exterior shape of the pyramids, built with such astounding precision. The subtle indent creating the eight sides is so slight, it is only visibly detectable under certain light angles often requiring modern technology to actually measure the perfection these ancient feats were. As mentioned, Gattenbrink's door leading from the king's chamber was for many years assumed to be an air tunnel. However, after attempting to inspect the shaft with an intention to consider utilizing the structure's own design to aid in fresh air circulation, it was realized that this shaft led instead to a blocking door. 
the doorway to an undiscovered chamber within the bowels of this most mysterious of ancient remnants. However, after several years of apparent reluctance to explore this hidden chamber, along with the mammoth challenge Gattenbrink encountered attempting to develop a robot capable of reaching the blocking door, capable of traversing the obstacles within the shaft to eventually penetrate this inner sanctum. As the discovery came to its ultimate culmination of actually seeing what was hidden behind this door, within this hidden chamber, a shaft deliberately designed to be near impossible to discover without modern technology, thus clearly a room of great importance. The media was blocked, a blackout descended upon the Giza Plateau, and the investigations remained guarded for a considerable amount of time. When it was eventually opened up to the world, the supposed tomb found in situ within the chamber was conveniently empty, without any distinguishing evidence to suggest the chamber's past function. Many people would be forgiven to suspect a conspiracy ensued, one in an attempt to conceal whatever was found in the supposed tomb of Osiris. What are the Egyptian authorities and even other influential countries' governments concealing regarding this mysterious chamber? Thankfully, it seems that this was not the last chamber to ever be realized. Two more chambers have now been discovered to still be buried, hidden within this great pyramid. One which is located above the Grand Gallery is said to be of a significant size. The question is, what could be hidden in these two remaining rooms? Will advancements in penetrative radar allow its true contents to be revealed to the world before the Egyptian government have the chance to hide its contents? These are astonishing ancient structures, undoubtedly one of the most incredible wonders on Earth. As such, they are highly compelling. During the past few years, we have covered many aspects of Mankuri, Khafra, and Khufu, the three great pyramids of Giza. We have explored numerous amazing facts regarding these structures, which have remained secret for many years. As the interest has grown regarding these three amazing structures, more people with suspicions, hypothesis, and technical and intellectual talents are fortunately beginning to approach these mysterious and wonderful structures in more explorative ways. We are experiencing the beginning of an ancient Egyptian renaissance, thanks to the gift of modern technology. At the beginning of this year, an international team of researchers began investigating the buildings from afar, gazing at them with unusual cameras. Using state-of-the-art infrared heat detection technology, they have discovered some surprising anomalies regarding the heat signatures visible on their faces. What these thermal anomalies reveal are undiscovered shafts more than likely leading to additional and undiscovered secret tombs deep within these amazing pyramids. The thermal scanning that they have successfully completed has revealed that there are many of these temperature fluctuations, in many areas undocumented as containing anomalies. Thus, what the team has done is pinpoint unexplored shafts dotted across the pyramids. The team also found a particularly impressive anomalous signature located on the eastern side of the Khufu Pyramid, very close to ground level. From the beginning, the team had always maintained that they would publicly disclose their findings. All of the staggering finds were made public by Antiquities Minister Mamdu El Damati. During a press briefing, quote, There is something like a small passage in the ground that you can see, leading up to the pyramid's ground, reaching an area with a different temperature. What will be behind it? said El Damati. The scanning was done throughout a 24-hour period, allowing the researchers to monitor subtle temperature changes as the pyramids heated up and then cooled down during the day and night. Though the huge granite and limestone blocks which make up most of the pyramid, this technology was capable of recognizing the slight differentials in their temperature. By monitoring the speed of this heating and cooling, thanks to these miraculous cameras, the researchers were able to isolate several persistent anomalies. Thus, they may have just unlocked more of the pyramid secrets in one day using state-of-the-art technology than Egyptian antiquities or archaeologists worldwide have in more than 100 years. While the difference in temperature between most adjacent limestone blocks was between 0.1 to 0.5 degrees Celsius, the largest of heat anomalies discovered on and within the Great Pyramid 
was an impressive 6 degrees warmer than the surrounding bricks. So far, there are plenty of theories being put forward as to what these heat anomalies might indicate. Not surprisingly, with the leading assumptions being that of just empty areas, a hypothesis I'm sure some would like to make a reality. The good news is that the study, which is called Operation Scan Pyramids, will continue. Next, the researchers intend to use cosmic particles called radiographic muons to create a 3D reconstruction of the pyramids of Giza in an attempt to map all the secret chambers and passageways within the pyramids. We will keep you posted on their future finds. We have long stated that there is considerable evidence to suggest that not only the Great Sphinx, but also its accompanying pyramids found dotting the plateau are far older than currently attested. We have shared the premise that many of the ancient hieroglyphs found all over Egypt are a mere 4,000 years old, while the pyramids and the Sphinx, both conveniently absent any of these same illustrative writings, are far older than this age. Why are there no hieroglyphs within the Great Pyramids? Additionally, why were there never any steps or stairs built into such awkward of structures? Is this a clue to the past function of the Great Pyramids? Were they never intended to be entered by humans? Not only is this absence of Egyptian art a compelling clue, but it also indicates that these structures were not constructed by the same people. If indeed they were constructed by the same people, why did they never document this task? There, in fact, exists an artifact within Giza. Once quoted as a must-see artifact by Zechariah Sitchin, this inconspicuous stone, known as the Inventory Stella, amazingly, is an authentic inventory left by King Khufu. It not only supports most of what we have now come to suspect regarding the plateau, a theory concluded from many different avenues of research, but it is a written description of the Egyptian civilization's activities upon the plateau, including what happened to the Sphinx, or more accurately, Anubis. We have come to suspect that many of the most popular alternative researchers who have spent their careers researching these specific subjects have, just like academia, ignored patently evident materials surrounding the ancient past. Giza's inventory Stella, Zachariah Sitchin wrote in his book Journeys to the Mythical Past that the Stella was irrefutable proof, provided by Khufu himself, that he did not build the Great Pyramid, and that the Pyramid and Sphinx were already there in his time. Predictably, the Stella is simply ignored. However, some, like James H. Breasted, commendably included the inventory Stella in his official list of 4th Dynasty artifacts, stating that, regardless of opinion, that it, quote, bore all the marks of authenticity. Also, the French Egyptologist Gaston Maspero, whose most famous book, The Dawn of Civilization, stated that the Stella was indeed a factual record of the life and deeds of Khufu. Regarding the Sphinx, the text states that lightning once struck the head, destroying a large portion. Khufu then re-carved the head into what we see today. He then built his temple in the vicinity of the House of the Sphinx and, interestingly, renovated the Great Pyramid. The Stella inventory not only confirms many things we have already come to suspect took place within Giza, but additionally, this mounting evidence is indicating to us that other, suspiciously popular, supposed in-depth investigations, often accompanied by expensive trips to said sites, are deliberately inaccurate works of controlled opposition. Regardless of other opinions regarding this matter, we will continue to present what we always have on this channel. Truth and honest opinions. As always, thanks for watching. In Mystery History's opinion, the ancient ruins found upon the plateau of Giza are some of, if not the most, heavily debated, heavily guarded, and most academically protected ancient site on Earth. Yet it remains one of the most talked about, mysterious, intriguing ancient stonework of them all. Many people are now aware of the anomalies, which were once tightly controlled secrets, surrounding the exterior features of the build and, more importantly, the achievements that these feats once were. 
These inexplicable factors – the size of the megalithic exoskeleton, the vastly different ages of the casing stones – are now thought by many as the defining motive for a cover-up regarding the pyramid's true age and original purpose. Media blackouts, counterintelligence, and many other outlandish conspiracies now rife among the research of the site, from giants to UFOs, the ideas and theories people have put forward for their function, or indeed, what could be hidden in voids constantly discovered yet to be penetrated, these hidden rooms, along with their ancient entrances, remain a complete enigma, even in recent years, as advances in penetrative radar become a reality and accessible to self-funded individuals and research teams, more and more voids, unexplained heat anomalies, and even air shafts not known of before, continue to be discovered within these enormous mystifying structures. Yet, as mentioned, the subculture, many genuine yet misguided in their investigative method, yet also many funded individuals involved in many other hard-to-deny subjects has successfully swamped the field with dis and or misinformation, creating opinionated followings with a successfully corrupted impartiality, deceptively manipulated into becoming said misinformation's advocates, rather than whence they came, an open mind, a skill for discussion, and an unbiased critical approach to subjects whose true nature are actively being protected. The predictably far fewer articles, books, and other logical, critical, impartial to all but fact, unwavering competent research done by many capable individuals, although adrift within an ocean of fallacy, shines much light upon some highly compelling yet albeit highly controversial features of the Plateau of Giza, features which may one day lead us to ultimately unlocking the pyramid's secrets and allowing us to finally understand what these structures' past functions truly were, not only in detail, but perhaps in an attempt of replication. During our own research, we have found some interesting similarities between Giza and Bosnia, among other lesser-known pyramid structures. And this curious yet continually reoccurring feature is now being more frequently discovered all over the world. The Great Pyramid of Bosnia, for example, a site discovered by Samir Osmanagic, has an ingenious river, which, after three years of research, was confirmed by him and his team to have had an artificial current. The reason for this is currently unknown, but it seems water was a significant factor in the past function of these ancient structures. Water is a curious thing, and in many situations, acts just like that of electricity. It runs in currents and travels through tubes like electric through cables. Yet no one seems to know what electricity is. We hypothesize that these water features are of tremendous significance when it comes to understanding the true function of these incredible structures. But I digress. The plateau has always intrigued me. Although buried by a desert sand, the solid sandstone below is of an unimaginable size and seemingly level, over 40 feet deep in some places, yet no one truly understands its origins. Indeed. Structures as large as the pyramids would need impressive foundations. But the plateau, it seems, is far too large and, if man-made, bafflingly sparse of any ruins, structures which one would have presumed would have been the reason for its enormous construction. There is, however, another hypothesis. A legend that told of a lost labyrinth, a secret underground lair as big as a town a secret underground structure so large and thus so easy to get lost within, it became known as the labyrinth. Long spoke of but always dismissed as mythological, this due to a lack of any substantial evidence for its existence. That is, until a few years ago, when a groundbreaking rediscovery was made, yet unfortunately it seems, this groundbreaking event was somehow masterfully stifled not shared by mainstream media, funded institutions with their armory of literature and magazines alike. Thus, it merely becomes an observational exercise in yet another display of the influence 
our currently controlling institutions have over public opinion, preventing an underground city of gigantic proportions buried beneath Giza, never successfully achieving public notoriety. The sand of Harara was scanned by a Belgian-Egyptian expedition team in 2008 in an effort to research something known as the Quarry Theory, suggested by Petri in 1889, following his finding of a great artificial stone surface measuring 304 meters by 244 meters. Petri interpreted the enormous artificial stone plateau as the foundation of the labyrinth, concluding that the building itself, although long believed to have been totally demolished in the Ptolemaic period, had in fact survived and lay hidden for millennia. The surveys proved its foundation remained unpenetrated and still laid undiscovered beneath the sandstone, never lost, the possibility of the results being that of the roof of the labyrinth, all but proven true. The following is an excerpt from the DIG's official report. Quote, Underneath this upper zone, below the artificial stone surface, appears, in spite of the turbid effect of the groundwater, at a depth of 8 to 12 meters, a grid structure of gigantic size, made of a very highly resistant material like granite stone. This proves the presence of a colossal archaeological feature, which has to be reconsidered as the roof of the still existing labyrinth." End quote. Are the legends true? Does the labyrinth of Giza still lay hidden, unexplored beneath the sands of Egypt? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling.